All okay. right. We'll call to order the Board of Franklin County Commissioners meeting for Wednesday, April 22nd. This is Clerk Paddock. Commissioner Stoudemire? Present. Commissioner Howard? Present. Chair Waymire? Present. Vice Chair Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Dunn? Present. All right, this is Chair Waymar. If you join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, we'll be giving that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God, under God, God indivisible, liberty, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we should have Pastor Drew Redding from Grace Community Fellowship. Yon. I am. Can you hear me? Ah, we sure can. Go ahead. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just uh, we lift up our prayers this morning. We pray that in the midst of fear, uh, that you would grant us peace. Uh, in the midst of confusion, allow us to trust. In the midst of scar scarcity, allow us to be generous. In the midst of isolation and loneliness, grant us comfort. This morning, we lift our prayers specifically for uh, children in our community, that you would be with them in the midst of new normal, as well as our teachers and educational system, that you'd be with them, uh, enabling them to uh, teach and love on their students in this new format. We pray especially for our medical professionals, that you'd be granting them an extra measure of safety and security, that you'd be encouraging them and lifting them up. We pray for uh, our political leaders, especially those in this meeting this morning, that you'd be granting them uh, just divine wisdom, wisdom beyond their own, uh, that they'd be empowered and equipped to lead well. We pray for family, friends, and neighbors who are directly impacted uh, by COVID-19. We pray that you would be with them. We pray in the midst of all of us that you'd remind us that you are still in control this is an opportunity to practice trust in you, to be reminded that you are God who works all things together for your good, that this is an opportunity to be your hands and feet and to be a non-anxious presence in the world around us. And we pray that you remind us that you are a God of peace. We thank you for all that you're doing, and all that you have done and all that you will do. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, thank you. We'll move down the list to correspondence and organizational business. Uh, Derek. Yeah, this is Derek. I don't have anything. All right. Uh, public comment? Or is there any public comment? Gordon? No one has signed up. All right. Takes us down to our consent agenda, which today would consist of uh, minutes, approving minutes from our April 15th meeting and tax change order number 129 and 130, which resulted in no value change. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? This is Roy. I, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. All right. Is there a second? This is Don. Second. All right. Thank you, Don. This is Janet. Commissioner Stottlemyer? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. This is Chair Waymeyer. We'll move on to our items of business. Uh, the sole item today would be uh, consider awarding a bid for courthouse painting. Brandon? Are you on? Uh, this is Brandon. Can you all hear me? Sure can. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, good. So we uh, we put out to bid the uh, uh, painting of the courthouse, um, the uh, trim around the windows and uh, everything below the uh, roof line. Um, the original bid that we got in, um, we got two of them. The lowest one uh, came in at uh, 131000 um, Since that time, uh, that uh, that company Heron Companies has uh, reached out and uh, they've gotten some uh, 
federal funding um, uh, for their company and they've passed on those savings to us if we would be interested in moving forward with the project. Um, with that, that brings the uh, uh, total cost of the project to 95500 um, again, this will include um, the railings in front of the courthouse, the, uh, the uh, wood uh, trim around the windows, and then some of the metal work um, above that that goes uh, just up to the edge of the roof line. Um, this does not include anything on the roof like the, um, the towers or any of the trim that's actually running across the, uh, the top of the roof. Um, we'll have to do that as a, as a separate project. Um, uh, down the road, maybe next year or something. Um, but looking for your approval to move forward with this um, at this $95,500. Um, they're anticipating this to take uh, six weeks to complete. Um, in order for us to maintain this savings through the federal funding um, that they're getting, the work needs to be done by June 1st. So with your approval, they are ready to start tomorrow. This is Commissioner Waymeyer. Are there any questions for Brandon? Discussion on this item? This is Commissioner and Dickinson. All, oh. all these funds are going to come out of the TIF uh, funds, right? Is that correct? This is Derek. Yeah, this this project will be paid for with TGT funds. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, you all will recall that we had a discussion about this and, and we originally said that we are going to hold off on this project and a couple others. Uh, that being said, we have an opportunity to realize a $35,000 savings here. We know that this is something we're going to have to do. Like at this point, and if you go look at the courthouse, you'll realize this, this is, I mean, this is as much a maintenance item as it is a cosmetic item. Our TGT fund um, looks really good right now. We do anticipate um, lower receipts in that fund this year because people aren't traveling, but we also know that our expenditures out of that fund are gonna be lower this year because we're not gonna see the events and the other uh, some of the other things that we would spend money on aren't going to exist because of COVID-19. And so I do think we can do this. And by the end of the year, I think our reserves will basically be at or around where they're at right now. So I don't know that we're going to see a huge dip there. And, and Janet, please chime in if you disagree with that. But that I mean, you and I had this discussion. I think we're on the same page there, and so Absolutely. I would recommend. Derek go and ahead. I did, um, review review those balances and discuss um, any revenue um, declining in that fund. And we feel like the expenditures that are planned out of there and the changes that will be made just because of decreased travel, we think that this fund can still sustain that. And as you recall, in, in the past number of years, um, you guys have elected not to spend everything out of that. So when we did the projects that we thought were worthwhile, um, we could use these funds for that. And as you guys have identified many times, um, the courthouse is such a, a centerpiece for our community um, where lots of activities happen when everything is um, going on, like the car show and, and things like that. And so, Yes, the funds are there, and this is uh, an important project for those funds. I would, uh, Cold, I would add a couple more things. I guess one is a question for Brandon, and then I want to talk about uh, the colors. Uh, Brandon, have you vetted? this hair and company or and are you content with their credentials um yeah this is brandon so um i've done a little bit of looking into this uh this organization um hair and companies has done some work for um some other uh municipalities um uh up in the kansas city area and um 
they've done uh, some work for uh, Liberty, Missouri, I believe, um, done some painting work for them, and um, they've got pictures of their work, so I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with uh, moving forward with them. Okay. And then my next question is, I know they have asked us about the colors, and you have removed some paint and have been able to ascertain that the original colors of the courthouse, to the best of our ability, are significantly different than what is currently on there. Do you want to explain that to the board? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, as you know, right now, the, the colors of the all this trim that we're talking about on the courthouse right now is the, kind of this, uh, this greenish kind of color. Um, as far as I can tell, um, the original colors were not anything close to what we have it painted right now. So the, uh, the window frames um, should be black. The uh, trim around the windows should be white. And all of the railing and the, the metal work um, closer to the roof line, all of that should be a, a silver color. So it's going to look, if we move forward with what we believe to be the most historically accurate colors, it's going to look very different than the way that it does now. But I, I think that it would look, it'll look really good, though, too. And you have found something from the historical society that would tend to kind of corroborate your belief in those colors, right? In other words, you've seen a postcard or some kind of picture that leads you to believe that the black frames and the white trim and the silver, that that is in fact what it looked like, correct? That's correct. I got this um, from the Historical Society a while back when I was trying to investigate the colors that this should all be. Um, we found a postcard that was based off of a photograph um, of the courthouse and then the artist just added the color to it. Um, it would stand a reason that they would add the color that was actually supposed to be on the courthouse um, at the time. So based off of this, uh, this postcard and the colors that they added to it, um, that, that is uh, uh, going along with what we're seeing of the lowest uh, uh, color of paint um, when we can scrape that off to the, uh, to the bare surface. Okay. And of course, we've seen lots of pictures of the courthouse back then, but they're all in black and white because the that technology didn't exist, correct? Exactly right. There's nothing, as far as color photographs, the only color photographs that I can see are showing this green color, which my best guess is that that was put on somewhere around uh, mid to late 70s, I think, is about when that turned to green. Um, I don't know that for sure, though. Okay. All right, this Colton, is that's all the... This is Commissioner Dickinson. I would love to see a picture, if you could pass that along some sometime. Yeah, um, that kind of makes me nervous, changing the color. I said that building is pretty sentimental to a lot of folks in the community. This is Commissioner Waymeyer. Um, Brandon, are you, do you have a copy of that picture? I do. Um, in fact, um, I am getting ready to send an email right now, um, and I can send it to all of you here in just a second. All right. Do, do we know, Brandon, they want to start tomorrow, but I would assume that, and I'm not a painter, but I would assume there is a lot of prep work, uh, a lot of scraping. Do we have any idea when they would actually start applying a new coat of paint? Uh, this is Brandon. I, I don't know for sure when they would start um, putting the paint on. Um, I know, I mean, like you say, there's going to be a um, significant amount of uh, scraping that's going to have to go on, and then they're going to have to put a primer on, of course, before the paint. So, I mean, it, it may be a few days um, before they're ready to, to slap the uh, finished paint on, um, but I can absolutely confirm that with them. Now, the reason I ask is, you know, if I understand them wanting to get started tomorrow, I certainly understand the commissioners wanting to see a picture, and so I'm just trying to work out some timeline in my head that works for both, because I'm not sure they're going to be able to pull up a picture 
right now during this meeting, but, but I could be, and even then, I don't know that we want to put them on the spot and ask them to make that decision today. Um, so I'm just trying to think that through. Yeah, we could also uh, say, assuming Brandon is on his, this is Commissioner Waymore, Brandon's on his phone, he could upload that image to Zoom and we could all look at it and it'd be public that way too. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, this is Brandon. I'm. I'm trying to find where I saved this. Uh, this picture at, um, so I can show it to you. Well, uh, let's uh, table this, and then we can go through our um, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> staff reports, which usually takes a while, and that'd give you a minute, Brandon. Yeah, that would be great. All right. This is Commissioner Waymar. We're going to move down to staff reports. Uh, Derek, go ahead. Yeah, so <clears throat> we continue to deal with COVID-19. We have been fortunate, and, and Nick and Alan will talk in more depth about this, but we've been fortunate in the last week that uh, we haven't had an influx of positives. Uh, our phone calls in the last week have continued to decrease. Um, that all being said, the, the workload has not. What we have shifted our focus to now is what happens come May 3rd when the state stay-at-home order expires. And we're in a difficult spot uh, because we, you know, we've gotten guidance from the state for, you know, the last month or so and have basically been acting at their direction well we don't know at this point if they're going to give further guidance if they're going to turn it back over to counties and so we have to be prepared for every contingency so uh, the team has been working on what that would potentially look like at a local level uh, dr ransom has been wonderful to work with throughout this process he has been an incredible help to us and he's going to play a key role moving forward and making sure that, you know, we make the best decisions that we can for the health and safety of our citizens. Um, Colt, as you and I and know, um, we had a teleconference last night with representatives from all of the small towns in the county, as well as the city of Ottawa. Uh, we also had Paul Bean with FCDC on the phone, Dr. Ransom was on the phone, and then, you know, the team of county employees who have been responding to COVID uh, got a lot of great feedback afterwards on how that meeting went. The purpose was to discuss uh, basically, what's going to happen on May 3rd, where we potentially go from there, and it was to start the discussion with, with all of the local municipalities, because certainly we want whatever decision that the Board of Commissioners makes or that Dr. Ransom makes, we want it to be as inclusive as possible, and, and we want the leaders of, we want the leaders of those municipalities to have a say and an understanding in what's going on. So I was pretty pleased with how that meeting went. I know <clears throat> I had several, several of them reach out to me afterwards and they were grateful that we did that. I will let <clears throat> Alan or Nick or even you or I and Colt talk further about that, but I think it was meant as a start of a conversation and as we continue to work through this situation into the summer and into the fall, I think we're going to continue to have those meetings so that we continue to keep our communities apprised of what's going on. And, and that is all I have this morning. Yeah, this is this is Colt, I'd just say that it was a good meeting. We only uh, did intent was to stay within the parameters of coma, so there was only two participants from uh, from each uh, entity, including ours. So staying staying legal and abiding by the law in the in the weird weird times we're in. So, all right, um, Alan Radcliffe, are you on? Yes, this is Alan Radcliffe. 
Um, to add on a little bit to what Derek said, uh, some of the things that were discussed last night, uh, we uh, are not getting any guidance from the state right now. Uh, they say they're working on it. They should have something out later this week or the first of next week. Um, whether they're going to extend the stay at home order, whether it's going to be lifted and um, moved down to the county level. Um, those are some of the things that uh, is making it pretty difficult for us to uh, decide what our plan is going to be moving forward. Um, we did review with uh, all the cities last night the federal guidance, um, which is in three phases. And one of those things that needs to be noted is that the first phase is they want to see a downturn of uh, cases continually for 14 days. Um, at the state level, that's currently not happening. We're still moving up. They are uh, at the state looking at possibly April 29th or 30th being the peak. And uh, of course, that's sometime next week. Now for our county, uh, and Nick will add a little bit more to this, but for our county, we've uh, had 12 cases and haven't had a new case for the last week to 10 days. So um, we, we are looking for some guidance, I guess, is what I'm trying to say from the state as to what they're going to do. Um, with Dr. Ransom, another thing that we're looking at is uh, additional testing. and. Um, from the meeting last night, it's going to be two weeks to a month before we are able to uh, get enough testing supplies in and be prepared to do the uh, the testing for a random test that uh, public health believes we need. Um, with that being said, some of the things that's also being looked at on these uh, three phases uh, we're looking at the possibility of coming before the commission every two weeks from now till maybe the end of the year just to review everything. Um, do we need to uh, adjust any of the, the restrictions or parameters that we've uh, issued either through a resolution from the county commission or a public health order? So those are things that could be anticipated throughout the rest of this year, because as we know, COVID-19 is not going to go away when the stay at uh, home order is lifted. It's still going to be here. Um, other things that were uh, talked about last night is, uh, are the schools going to have some type of a high school graduation for the seniors? Uh, we're going to reach out to the uh, school districts and the schools and see what their thoughts are on that. Um, on these three phases, how long do those phases last? Uh, we don't know that yet. <clears throat> also, uh, what's going to happen with the, the summer events typically, like the swimming pools or the, uh, is the playground equipment at the parks going to continue to be shut down? Um, baseball, uh, as we know, is a large uh, gathering of people from about uh, May through the 1st of July and even farther. The, on any of these phases, they are talking about uh, limiting uh, the number of people gathering in uh, groups. Uh, starting out phase one is still staying at 10 or less. And then as we move into uh, the second phase, it goes up to 50. So that's going to also potentially affect uh, any of the concerts or events that go on through the summer, maybe even our uh, county fair and the other fairs that are typically occurring through the, the summer months. Uh, one of the big things that uh, the federal guidance is suggesting is continuing of social distancing. Even as businesses open back up, they want them to also work in phases, continue to 
keep people as home as much as possible to work from home, those that can. But if you're working in a, a business to continue the social distancing. So those are, there's a lot of things that are moving targets right now. And uh, we could potentially be coming back to the county commission on the 29th uh, and hopefully have some guidance from the state. But right now, there's a lot of unknowns for us. And, and Colton, I'll jump in and add to that. <clears throat> Alan mentions the 29th. Well, why the 29th? Well, the state stay-at-home order expires on the 3rd. And the 29th would be the last commission meeting before that. And the next one wouldn't be until the 6th. And so there's a very good chance we will be in front of you next week. And yeah, like Alan said, hopefully we have guidance from the state. If we don't, we'll probably be in front of you with some type of recommendation for what we need to do at the local level. There's no guarantee that that would be implemented because certainly we could get guidance, you know, in between the 29th and the 3rd, but we do need to be prepared for that possibility because if we just sit around and wait and expect it to come and then it doesn't, well, then there we are. The 3rd is a Sunday and we, uh, you know, we could call a special meeting on that Monday if need be, the 4th but I think we'd certainly rather be out ahead of it. So I would just ask the commissioners to be prepared to discuss, you know, actual plans and potential restrictions and what that all looks like a week from today. Thank you. All right, any questions for Alan? And we'll move down the list. Uh, Nick Robbins, are you on? Yes, sir. This is Nick Robbins. Thank you. Um, we uh, have uh, been working close with Alan. The meeting last night I thought went really well um, for uh, everybody to get informed. One of the things that I want to talk about is just first off, right now we have 18 pending tests um, out. We've got 15 people in quarantine, 15 <clears throat> people in isolation, and two addresses throughout the county that those uh, individuals are in. We're averaging seven to nine tests per day. We've done a total of 221 tests in the county. And as Alan said, we've had 12 positive that we, uh, that we now have recovered. If you remember, we, used to, we were putting presumptive positives out. Those were individuals that probably lived in the household or um, were close that may have had some symptoms, but we didn't have the means to test at the time when we were doing presumptive positives. As testing has gotten more readily available, um, we've, uh, we've been able to see that we're now able to test uh, People without uh, die hard. I guess we had a had a testing where you had to have a fever, and then it went to if you were healthcare or essential, you didn't have to have a fever, but you had to meet different criteria. That criteria continues to get uh, not as strict as we go go along. So we're seeing to test more people. We did receive testing a week and a half ago the FDA hadn't approved it it did ship out before it was supposed to uh, that serum testing was what we thought we'd be able to use for a, uh, a mass test or to uh, to do a study of our own come to find out I did not get released by FDA we sent it back we're uh, the OFP lab has ordered tests that they'll be able to do in-house um, we're hoping within the next 10 days to see those start arriving and if, when that starts to arrive I know there's a lot of conversation with Dr. Ransom, myself, uh, the health department on what that's going to look like and to do a good random study we're going to have to get every corner of the county so 
uh, we'll reach out with Janet. We'll do a, a good study of what, what that looks like, and hopefully we can get some kind of uh, data on how many positives we have. I believe Dr. Ransom spoke last night that up to 40% of carriers with COVID could be asymptomatic. So you think about 40% of the people that could have it not carrying it. I do know in other counties, um, they have seen asymptomatic carriers passing this along. So there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of people learning every day, but uh, I think we're staying on it really well. I think we want to highlight is we've, we've seen some good teamwork about this. I will tell you, when this first started, there was a lot of uh, discussion and people doing things in silos. Advent Health, OFP, uh, OFP Lab, the nursing facility, Rattling, Richmond, uh, Wellsville, all have been good to work with. We uh, We've been able to get the issues we need. We've been able to work with them. We've been able to help facilitate testing. Uh, and I, I want to throw a kudos out to the because they've locked their facilities down. And, they, and in Franklin County, we locked our facility down early. And we're, uh, we're doing a great job of keeping it out and not, uh, not exposing our elderly. So... I do want to make that we do have a lot of good going on in our county. Other than that, we, uh, we still continue to see a decrease in call volume. EMS, uh, we're averaging 13 to 16 calls a day, and we're down about eight. I think the hospital's seen a decrease of people in the hospital. So we are, uh, we are seeing people staying at home instead of going out and or calling for ambulances. That's my report. All right. Casey, Brady, are you on? Casey? All right. Jeff Richards? Yeah, this is Jeff. Um, Go ahead. Okay, from the sheriff's office, I'd just say that we uh, – we're still we're still just kind of maintaining right now, and uh, we have seen a little bit of an increase in uh, in uh, the volume of calls. Uh, we had a huge lull for a while, but uh, with the weather getting nice and people maybe getting a little a little weary, uh, that we have seen a, unfortunately an increase in domestic violence and uh, and a few other things. Um, but our staff is staying, staying safe. Uh, we're all wearing masks when we deal with the public and, um, and we're, we're maintaining their staff is, is staying healthy on the road and in, in the jail. So other than that, um, we do have a few things with the training. we worked with the state, um, and there's been some modifications in the way that we, uh, and the number of hours that were required for the for the year, because our training year ends in June, and so there's been a modification there, and then also a modification on the number uh, on the method of those. They're allowing uh, more uh, web-based and online training um, hours than, than normal. So uh, we are still getting the, getting those in, and um, take, taking advantage taking advantage of those. And um, our last, uh, we did have an open position uh, at patrol, and uh, we making a we've made a hire on that, and uh, that person will be starting um, in May. So, other than that, unless uh, commissioners have questions for me, that's all I have. All right, thank you, Jeff. Uh, Janet Paddock. Hey. Hey, Colt, before yeah. we transition to Janet, um, Brandon just emailed a picture of the courthouse. So if there's a way uh, for the five of you to pull up your email, it is in there waiting on you. I just wanted to let you know that um, so that you could look while we finish up staff reports. Okay. All right. Thanks. Janet? 
I don't have much to report today. Just continue to work on the budget um, and my staff continues to look at um, things that concerning the upcoming elections. Just wanted to remind all you and the public that um, the filing deadline is still remains the same. It's June 1st at noon. If there are people listening or you know of people that need to get filed for a particular office, they should definitely call my office and we can work through getting their paperwork filed um, with them. Um, just a reminder that all the precinct committee people for the Republican and Democratic Party will all be on the ballot um, for the primary. Additionally, the treasurers and trustees um, of every township will be on the ballot also, and we're going to be working to get information out to those people to make sure they get uh, filed. Um, and all of our um, county officers and two commissioners um, will be on the ballot. So the sheriff, the county attorney, clerk, register deeds, treasurer, um, we will all be on the ballot this time also. So um, just working really hard to try to find ways to get everyone um, filed and, and ready to be on the ballot come the primary and general elections this year. Additionally, um, all the county clerks across the state are working really hard to figure out what um, voting is going to look like. Um, we are entertaining the idea of sending out some advanced ballot forms so that anyone and everyone who wants to can vote by mail. Um, although it doesn't look like there is going to be any kind of push to go to a statewide mail ballot election um, this year or any subsequent year after that. So um, just working on those things. And then one thing for you guys, I did get a call from Mark Samsel, who's the representative for the 5th District, um, which is Wellsville, um, Rantoul Lane, and on down into Anderson County. Um, he called yesterday and said that he was trying to get a hold of several of the commissioners. I know that he did with IAN yesterday, um, but he left his number with me and said if any of you had any thoughts about what the state um, could be doing or should be doing um, regarding opening back up or extending the order or anything like that, he would love to hear from commissioners. Um, to get their feedback as leadership from our community. So if you have any interest in um, visiting with um, Mr. Samsel about that, please um, reach out to me and I'll get you his number. What, uh, Don, Janet? Yeah. Could you just send email that to us? I sure can, Don. Thank you. Janet, do you want to tell the board about the CARES Act deposit we received this week? Sure. Um, so I was notified by the health department that we were going to be receiving some funding that we were expecting from um, the federal government. We did receive um, that that we had been already notified about, which was a small portion of some grant funding, um, which was about $3,000, but we did receive a larger deposit of about $46,000 uh, from the CARES Act and we have put that in the account that we're uh, tracking all those expenses in where our department heads are putting things as as expenses are made for COVID so we're going to be working on uh, um, a budget for those funds and making sure that those funds are tracked and used solely for COVID um, so the team is working on that right now. It was a pleasant surprise, certainly. To, uh, Jody reached out to us with two deposits that totaled just under $50,000. So I haven't had a ton of good news throughout this, but that, that, was, that was a pleasant email to receive, so. All right, it's great. Um, any questions for Janet? All right, we'll move down. David Lee, are you on? Yes, Commissioner, this is David. I wanted to uh, talk today just a little bit about the recycling center. Uh, I know um, over the last couple of days, I've heard from a couple of you uh, concerning the conditions at the recycling center on Monday, and I wanted to address those. 
Um, and I can assure you that that was just an unusual situation. Um, ordinarily, our recycle center is open on Saturday uh, for about half a day, uh, which allows us to keep the outside um, at least Saturday morning in relatively good order. Um, that allows the citizens all of uh, Saturday afternoon and Sunday to continue to drop off material. So it's not unusual uh, to arrive for our staff to arrive on Monday mornings to um, quite a quite a mess out there. Uh, but usually we have uh, staff in place to uh, get that cleaned up first thing Monday morning, and it's it's generally not a problem. Um, but due to the COVID-19, we have adjusted our uh, how we do things out there a little bit. Uh, one of them is we're not open on Saturdays. So we don't have anybody there um, on Saturday mornings to keep that cleaned up. Uh, so the uh, amount of material that's dropped off has, um, you know, there's more of it on Monday morning. Uh, this past Monday, we were uh, severely shorthanded. Um, we have four recycling folks and we were down to two that day. And so, um, uh, and, and ordinarily when we're short staff like that, uh, we have folks from the noxious weed department and, and the uh, solid waste superintendent also will go and help out. They had other commitments uh, Monday and weren't able to, uh, weren't able to get over there. So it was, um, it was an unusual circumstance. Um, um, and, um, uh, they were able to get, in fact, they spent um, four and a half hours yesterday morning getting it cleaned up. So it's straightened up and, and uh, ready to go. Um, really, the only difference between this past Monday and the, the previous three Mondays where we've been in this uh, uh, stay-at-home order and uh, you know, modified operations at the Recycle Center, the only difference is we were shorthanded this past Monday. I suspect that if this was a ongoing issue, uh, I would have heard from uh, citizens and I suspect you would have too long before this past Monday. So we are, um, um, we are doing the best that we can uh, under the given circumstances. And ordinarily, I think our folks do a, a great job of, of keeping things cleaned up. Something else that is uh, contributing to this, uh, we're seeing actually an increase in uh, the the recycled goods that are dropped off. Uh, we think that is at least partially due to Anderson County and Osage County completely shutting their recycle operation down. Uh, so it's not unusual for us to see um, out of county tags from um, the surrounding counties in, in normal situations. Uh, that is an increased here lately. So um, um, at the recycle center, really the only thing that our citizens should notice is the building is closed. Uh, we have, um, we're still accepting all the various commodities, uh, but we're handling things a little differently due to the COVID-19. We had information from the health department that kind of gave us some indication as to how long the virus potentially lives on the various pieces of material. And so we are handling those, um, um, you know, specific to each piece, uh, each type. Um, tin and plastic uh, are the most affected uh, with the potential for the virus to stay on that material for up to seven days. Um, and so we have, we have the ability to store the tin on site for that seven days. The plastic, the sheer volume of that that we receive, it's just not uh, feasible for us to well, we don't have the ability to store it on site. And so we have been taking the, uh, the plastics to the transfer station. And that will only be a temporary uh, situation. As soon as we're able to get back to business as usual, we will um, uh, accept and, and continue to accept and process that like we ordinarily would. But for right now, the, um, the, the plastics are going to the transfer station. And that's really the only other um, you know, change that we've got out at the recycle center. Uh, this is Roy, David. Uh, 
That was uh, one of the questions that came up. Somebody said you were not taking plastic at uh, uh, at all. So yeah, we are taking it. We're just not keeping it. Okay, I think that needs to be get out, get that out to the public that you're still taking it. So yeah, we we uh, I think no our signage, in there. our signage, which we put signs up all around the um, the building. I think our signage indicates that already. Okay. This is Commissioner Dickinson. Is there still a market for our recyclables? The uh, the um, cardboard and that stuff, the, the market is actually up uh, significantly on that. Uh, there is no market for plastics. There hasn't been for quite some time. Um, and and the, uh, the tin, we're able to um, uh, sell that with our other uh, metal goods. And so uh, we do continue to have a market for the tin. Uh, it's just the plastics that uh, are problematic right at this point. Um, and, you know, so it, it, the whole point of recycling is to keep things out of the landfills. But in this particular instance, for this short period of time, um, we are sending the plastics to the transfer station. This is Commissioner Dickinson again. If there's no market for plastics, what do you do with them in a normal situation? We ordinarily bail them and we sell, I mean, we get a little bit for them. Um, and so we continue to do that. It's just, it's not, um, the, the, the price has, has, um, has been pretty low for quite some time. And that's, that's due to the, um, oh, China, not accepting um, the, the recycled goods like they used to, and the fact that we've got uh, some factories here in the United States that haven't come online yet. We expect that market to improve over time. How much it will prove, I, I'm not sure. All right, any other questions for David? Uh, Casey, Brady, are you on? Yes, I apologize. I was talking earlier and was muted and didn't know it. So um, I just have a, a couple of quick things. Um, I'm getting a lot of questions about second half tax payments. And at this time, um, there have been no extensions statewide on second half tax payments. So I just wanted to um, get that information out publicly. Um, I'll keep you posted if something changes. And then also um, to um, go back to what Alan and Derek had talked about, um, I'm getting a lot of questions from businesses on guidance for them reopening. So I just want them to know that as soon as we have that, um, we'll be sending out information. Other than that, I don't have any updates. All right. Well, let's move back up to our item of business, the courthouse painting project. Hopefully everybody's been able to open their email and see the image of the the historic image of the courthouse and what it likely looked like um, originally paint wise color wise um brandon are you back on brandon you're muted if you're trying to talk all right can you You there? It looks like he just dropped. Okay. Well, we have the image in front of us. Uh, ultimately, we, without Brandon, we're going to know that we're going to have to decide whether or not to go with this color scheme or uh, what we've uh, traditionally had, what's familiar. Uh, that's going to come down to probably commissioner's conversation. Derek, are you there? Yeah, certainly, and I, I think I can step in for Brandon and answer any questions, or at least we'll certainly try. So by all means, whatever questions you have, I'll try and answer. Hey, I'm back on. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. So this is Commissioner, uh, this is Commissioner Waymire. I think we're going to have to ultimately have a conversation among commissioners if we want to uh, change the colors back to what it might have been historically or... Uh, leave it with what uh, folks are familiar with. Um, what are 
what's everybody's thoughts? This is Commissioner Dickinson. Where, where's the, I'm not seeing a lot of black on there. Where were you thinking black is going to be? This is Brandon. Yeah, so in the picture, it's kind of hard to see. Um, so right just next to the uh, white, the white is the trend that's around the windows. The black is actually going to be um, on the window frames. Um, so it's kind of hard to see in that picture, but uh, the, uh, the black was really determined by uh, peeling some of the paint off on the outside of the windows and seeing that that was the, the lowest layer um, that was there. Uh, this is Roy. This is Roy. I think uh, uh, maybe reach out to the public uh, while they're scraping the paint off and see if anybody else has any color photos of the courthouse that might show the original color. But I would like to see it go back to the original colors myself. This is Commissioner Dickinson. Uh, Commissioner Dunn, they, they said that there was no color photography back then, so that would not be a possibility. Well, you never know what's out there in the public. <laughs> Commissioner Stottlemyre or... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm looking yeah. at it. Okay. I, I see where there's more black up above the windows around the perimeter of the building. Uh, it's a black strip underneath the towers and so forth goes around and then at the porch I can see there's a black strip right up at the uh, a porch above the stairways on the ends there's a black stripe that goes around there too I don't know it's one of them things I can see why they changed it from black uh, you know but uh, I don't know I, it's like Derek said historically that's the way it was. Like most people are probably going to complain one way or another. And, and uh, basically, if you give the reasoning that you tried to, to restore it to its original look to keep the heritage of it like it was, I guess. This is Commissioner Waymire. I guess my thoughts, it'd be a pretty drastic change. And, um, Personally, I would think we would really want to get some, do maybe a little more research or get some uh, uh, more public input before we did something like that. Um, but uh, given the time's kind of of the essence on this project, I, I don't know if that's going to be possible. Um, uh, this is Commissioner. It's pretty uh, sentimental to a lot of folks, and everybody's going to see it. I'd hate to do something kind of hastily. Personally, uh, I'd I'd be in favor for freshening it up. What's there? Um, it'll look good if it's if it's fresh, and I think people would be happy. But go ahead, Commissioner Dickinson. You had something? Yeah. Uh, one thing I worry about black is that it um, it doesn't wear well. It'll tend to fade and weather um, maybe a little bit more than a different color would. If we were looking for a long time solution, that maybe black wouldn't be it. And this is Commissioner Waymire, and I see some kind of discrepancies, for instance, like the gable ends, the triangles up, uh, you know, where it meets the, the face of the building meets the roof. The front one on the front of the building is kind of filtered by a tree, but it looks like it's green like we have now. And then the, the, the one that you can see most prominently, it's red. Uh, uh, Commissioner Howard, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm looking at the picture. I th I think the it looks fine. I think the, I like the looks of it in the picture that I got on my email. But um, I can go along with whatever everybody else thinks. I, like I said, I'm, I'm okay with either way. But I like the looks of it as in the picture that I got. Uh, this is Brandon. Uh, just to be clear, um, the uh, the parts that uh, Don, I believe you were referring to um, on the, just above the uh, third floor windows, um, there's that uh, decorative line that goes around and then the top of the porch. Um, and so this kind of, it almost looks like it's kind of black. The, the picture didn't, didn't come through really great, but I think the artist was trying to get a, get a, a gray there because that, that color, um, 
that's underneath there is uh, a silver um, right now. So uh, that should be a, a silver or a gray is what they're trying to show on that, uh, that picture that I sent to you. Okay, thank you. Colton, I think <clears throat> both, uh, I'm not sure you can go wrong here. I think that if you keep it the same color, it is gonna be what the public is used to seeing. Um, probably what all of the public can recall ever seeing. So I think that's safe. I would also agree with Commissioner Stottlemyre that if you are trying to do it to preserve the heritage and are trying to make it historically accurate, I certainly think that's going to resonate well with the people who would tend to have strong opinions about this as well. So I'm not sure you really have a bad option here. It's just what the board would like to see done and, and you know, it, not trying to rush a decision, but obviously the contractor does want to want to get started. So if we want to take some time with this, we can try to get creative and get them in here and get them started and then reconvene something here in a few days or, but I do think, you know, we'll need to make a decision on a pretty quick timeline. Thank you. Uh, this is Roy. This is Roy again. I could, I could go either way. Just keep it the way it is and redo it, or try to, like Don said, do it as historically accurate as possible, or a combination of uh, just the railing and uh, railing and that stuff going back to silver, and everything else. Uh, just redo what it is right now. This is Commissioner Weimar. I, I I agree the merits of going back to what it is traditional. To traditionally, I think that there's just a, a group of folks who have a real strong interest in historic uh, buildings and uh, are going to have strong opinions on maybe how it's done and the details. And um, I think to do it right, um, it's going to take more than a week. And um, <clears throat> it's going to be particularly difficult given the situation we're in. Um, with the health crisis, so um, that that'd be my concerns. I, uh, yeah. This is Commissioner Dickinson. Also, you have to realize that in the day there weren't a lot of options for colors, um, so that's why it's black and white and silver. This is essentially a copy of a copy. It's an artist's picking color to mimic what's on there, and then we'd be picking colors to try and mimic what the artist mimicked. But yes. Well, there's Roy again. Uh, do you want to uh, go ahead with just a, uh, a motion to go ahead and have the have the uh, contractor go ahead and accept that bid and go with the color scheme later? Uh, Derek Brandon, would that work for you? Well, I yeah, we could do a motion to. At start the project the the issue is I'm afraid we're going to need a color before we meet again in a week and, and that's what I was trying to get at like yes I if you want the project done then it's a no-brainer to make a motion to do it today um, and we can defer on the color but I I'm afraid you're going to have a contractor sitting around with nothing to do early next week because, and I could be wrong, Colt, you'd know as well, if not better than any of us, how long it's going to take to prep this. I just want to make sure that we get them that color and ample time so that there's not a lag in their production. Yeah, I would say, this is Colt, I would say he's going to want that color right away. There will be a significant amount of prep work, as we know, being as an old building with peeling paint, but especially with the uh, lead precautions you have to take. Once you set up an area to, to prep and paint it, he's probably going to want to go ahead and paint it while he's set up and has access to whatever given area he's working on. So This is Commissioner Dickinson. Is this, this is a decision that we need to make? Can we, uh, can we put a point the committee maybe include the historical society director and, and let them make the decision including Brandon and yeah this is Commissioner Waymer I think that's what we 
probably don't have time for. Uh, is that correct, Derek, Brandon? I mean, that, that would be my belief, yes. Um, yeah, in a perfect world, you you do put a, a committee together, including Diana Dean and Wayne Duderstock, probably, because he's shown great interest. He helped us apply for the Heritage Grant. I mean, I do think it would be nice to be able to throw a committee together, but yeah, you're, you're just, we we just don't have time and and I don't now I don't know how long a, a paint job lasts, um, but we're probably not going to be in this position again anytime soon. And so it's a difficult spot that you know safest option. The safest option is probably to just redo what we have, um, but I'm not sure there is a, a really unsafe option. But but I'm not sure we have time to throw committees together. Commissioner Waymar? Yes. This is Don. Just to throw it off center, I, I think everybody, if we hadn't got thrown into this position, uh, we'd have probably just went with the way it is now, uh, the colors it is now, and I'd like to put a motion on the floor just to keep it the colors it is now, just to move things forward. I appreciate you making a motion to, to help move things forward. Is there a second to um, uh, leave the colors as is and, and uh, freshen it up, go with go with the current color scheme on the courthouse? Commissioner Dunn, second. All right. Uh, Clerk Paddock, I guess would you call the question for the colors and then we will go back and um, uh, take action for the actual painting. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Stahlmeyer? Yes. Here Waymeyer? Yes. All right. Uh, this is Commissioner Dickinson. Well. Can I say I do appreciate Brandon and your research? Very well. Yes. Uh, this is Commissioner Waymeyer. I, I appreciate the research as well, and uh, I wish we had more time to go explore that that route. But uh, given the opportunity that's in front of us, looks like we need to to to, to move forward. Uh, with that said, is there someone that would like to make a motion to award the bid to paint the historic courthouse to uh, Heron Companies in the amount of ninety five thousand five hundred dollars? Before you make that motion. Um, commissioners, and, and I think you all know this, I just want to frame it for you. Um, you have time. I mean, if, if this color is something that is really important to you, you have all the time in the world, but it's going to, it needs to be worth $35,000 to you because that is the reason that this is in front of you now in the midst of a pandemic, uh, you know, I'm not trying to put you guys in a tough spot. It's just, we just learned that we have the opportunity to save 35 grand because the contractor received the payroll protection plan funding. And so I uh, don't like putting you in this spot, but uh, the opportunity to save $35,000 is palpable. And so, um, if it's worth more than you to that, then certainly we can delay it. But assuming that it's not, then, then as Colt said, by all means, somebody make the motion and we'll get this done. Thanks, Colt. This is Roy. I make a motion to go ahead with the low bid contact contractor. All right. Is there a second? Commissioner Dickinson, I second. This is Clerk Paddock. Commissioner Dickinson, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Stottlemyre? Yes. Commissioner Howard? Yes. Chair Waymeyer? Yes. All right. Uh, this brings us to our last item, which would be commissioners' comments and board reports. Uh, I will run down the roll call. Uh, order, Commissioner Howard, do you have anything? No, I haven't been to any meetings. So All my stuff has been canceled um, so far, so I have not been to anything. All right, thank you, Commissioner Dunn. 
Yeah, I had a couple of things out of teleconference board meeting with ECAN uh, last night. Uh, the main highlights is their uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance is going up nine and a half nine and a half percent, and uh, the board uh, agreed to accept Blue Cross Blue Shields uh, as their insurance carrier. But the only difference is they uh, voted to go ahead and add ten dollars to each uh, person's policy because uh, it currently was twenty five dollars, so they're going to go up to uh, thirty five dollars additional for each employee. Uh, they talked about their rent uh, payments are all came in on time this last month. Uh, some people had questions whether they're going to get uh, rent relief or, uh, you know, excuse rent for a while, but the uh, actual rent is going to keep going on and there's no uh, intentions right now to reduce any of the rents. Also, all the employees are working. Um, even Head Start, what Head Start is doing, they're reaching out to all their kids who are in Head Start and uh, doing adaptive uh, training and taking training to the kids' house and and doing things for the kids still. And that's about all I have on ECAN. One other item, I got a, a call about the rifle range on 68 Highway. Um, a lot of complaints are coming in for the people who live directly north of that rifle range across the river about uh, people firing at all times of the day from sun up to sundown with high powered rifles and and if you ever are down range from a rifle range uh, it almost sounds like people are shooting at you. And it's uh, very disturbing to the people that live just north of the rifle range. And um, I got a call yesterday from one of those persons and was complaining about all the shooting over there and all the shooting seven days a week, almost continually. So it doesn't sound like those people are staying at home at all. So anyway, I'm just going to throw that out. And I think uh, we need to review the... Uh, special use permit that the rifle range got in the first place. And that is all I have to make comments on. All right. Uh, Commissioner Dickinson. Um, the only thing I did, I listened uh, again to the um, governor's weekly um, call with elected officials. And one of the things that they found right now is that the federal government has run out of their funding, um, at least they had at that point, for small businesses. And they were, they were encouraging people to keep a contact with their banks. Um, so if there's any chance that you are not going to be able to make a payment, you know, work with your bank because they don't want to foreclose on you any more than you want to be foreclosed on. So keep those lines of communication open. Also, I was a part of that phone call last night, and that was a very good phone call. Uh, it, it was, uh, it really showed how important it was when you had representatives from every municipality uh, in the county that we are all in this together. And I think that they did um, appreciate the fact that we were including them in any decision that we were going to make. So that's it for me. All right. Commissioner Stottlemyre. Yeah. I, of course, I hadn't been to any of my city meetings. Uh, I do email them and, and uh, update them of anything that's going on, and I think they're appreciative of that. And that's the only thing I might report on is I've been working, of course, like everybody else on the phone and Internet, but we've been working with the state of Kansas Wildlife and Parks, uh, RCND State Depart uh, our state office, and, of course, I being the chairman. And uh, we've been working with uh, Kansas Wildlife and Parks. They are helping the pantries out across the state of Kansas and wanted us to spearhead it. And what it is, it's a, you know, they have a elk herd out at uh, Fort Riley that is regulated by the state wildlife. And they offer, was offering up uh, uh, 
elk meat uh, in uh, quarter pound patties that are vacuum packed in five pound boxes. And we've located several entities, one of them being here at Hope House in Ottawa and all over the state of Kansas. And uh, we're hopefully we'll be getting in in the next day or two, 420 pounds and working with Hope House to help them get through a rough time. And that's all I have. All right. I also don't have anything to add. Uh, this is Commissioner Waymire. Would somebody care to make a motion to adjourn? Hey, Cole, this is Brandon. And could I jump in here for just a second? Yeah. Hey, I, I, sorry, I've been spending the last few minutes trying to get a hold of this contractor, so I just wanted to pass this along. Um, so on Thursday, uh, tomorrow, they're planning to prep and paint a window, just one, so that we can see what it's going to look like. Um, we already know what the original color is. They were going to do the other one in whatever colors, the proposed colors were. And then we could make a decision within a, you know, they need to know pretty quick after that. Um, they're going to bring the lifts in and really go to town on the building starting Monday. So a um, little bit of a miscommunication there at the beginning um, on when they were hoping to fully start. Um, but if that's an option, I just wanted to pass that along. Uh, so if we want to see how this is going to look, um, having the black and white instead of the green. I would say we've made a decision, you know, even the green and the existing color are pretty faded. So whatever version of that color they go with, you never know, uh, picking out paint colors, maybe it's got a little uh, bit of something you didn't see on the chip. So there'd still be some utility in, in looking at those colors, just the fresher version of what's already there. So I would probably, I would say have them do that. And that'd be something we could check out and make sure that looks good. Yeah, does anybody disagree? No. All right, then. It looks like that's uh, settled. So would somebody like to make a motion to adjourn? Uh, this is Roy. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. Is there a second? It's Don. I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. You too.